You probably already know that exercise is good for your heart health. And this would be a pretty boring video if I just repeated what every cardiologist, exercise physiologist, and personal trainer has said over and over. So let's skip all that and get to some information that you've likely never heard before, unless you're, well, a muscle scientist, that is. You know what? Let's even do away with the exercise. A travesty, I know. Let's focus on one thing, muscle itself, independent of exercise. There's this study that I analyzed wherein the researchers wanted to know if something strange that your muscle does impacts your overall cardiovascular health. We're talking about exosomes. Exosomes are vesicles that originate within your muscle cells and get released into the surrounding extracellular milieu. These exosomes contain multiple factors within them, like proteins, RNA, and microRNA, as a few examples. Not sure what those are? <laughs> That's okay, uh, I'll explain in a bit. Just know that these exosomes are vesicles released by your muscle cells and they contain things inside of them. So the question is, what happens when these exosomes are released and interact with other cells, specifically cardiovascular cells like endothelial cells? You see, your blood vessels are lined with these cells called endothelial cells, and these cells have tremendous power in that they secrete all kinds of different proteins like endothelin-1, uh, nitric oxide, and many more to influence the cells floating by. And those in the region to act in a certain way. Endothelial cells can cause immune cells to become more pro-inflammatory. They can allow more plaque-forming lipoproteins through. They can change your blood pressure and much more. But what is also critical in heart health is the ability to undergo a process called angiogenesis, the production of new blood vessels. There have been cases of people with complete blockages in their heart, and yet they never know it, never experience a heart attack, because their body has produced an alternative blood flow around the blockage. Let's just take a moment to realize <laughs> how freaking cool that is. The body's always looking out for you. But in less extreme scenarios, angiogenesis is important for day-to-day -day existence, like allowing your brain more blood flow, allowing your other arteries more space to lower blood pressure and more. It's important. Okay, so how does that tie into the muscle-derived exosomes? Well, these exosomes may create some changes in these endothelial cells. For example, when the researchers of this study exposed skeletal muscle-derived exosomes to endothelial cells, the endothelial cells experienced improved cell survival, as seen on the left shown in the black bar. So exo being the exosomes applied to the cells, and they also led to the generation of more cells seen on the right by the proliferation marker called KI67. Okay, great. It's clearly doing something, but that does not inform us on the angiogenesis aspect itself. Now, here's where things get a little weird, because if you were to ask any cardiac biologist on the street, which I'm sure everyone does on a regular basis, the answer to the question of what molecule causes angiogenesis is most definitely VEGF. VEGF, or V-E-G-F, if it is secreted by the cells, will lead to greater activation of angiogenesis genes, and the whole process begins producing branching vessels from an already existing vessel. So, we would expect VEGF to be highly concentrated in these exosomes. And if we look at the data, absolutely nothing. Don't overthink this. The cell condition is the VEGF present in the cells, and the exo condition is the amount of VEGF in the exosomes. And if there's a splotch, there's a VEGF. Maybe by my eyesight, it's going bad, but uh, I don't see anything in the exo condition. So. Do these exosomes actually cause angiogenesis if the most common factor isn't present? Well, in short, maybe not through VEGF signaling because adding VEGF directly to the cells, as seen here, increases angiogenesis gene expression like angiopoietin. But look at the XO condition, nothing. But if we look at other angiogenesis genes like interleukin-8 and angiopoietin-like-4, suddenly VEGF addition does nothing, 
and the exosomes do. So what does that mean? It means that these exosomes regulate angiogenesis in endothelial cells through a VEGF independent pathway, which is pretty freaking cool. But how do they do that? Well, I did mention that we'd return to the factors found inside those exosomes because these factors, the proteins, the RNAs, that lead to these differences in these angiogenesis-related gene expressions. The exosomes will bind to the endothelial cells and merge with the cell membrane, thereby dumping everything inside the exosome into the endothelial cells. Now, these factors then do what they would always do in any cell. The proteins will go off and perform their function inside the cell, possibly activating other proteins that will bind to these non-VEGF-related genes and express them. Or similarly, the RNA might be translated to proteins, which do the same thing, or the proteins that are directly involved in angiogenesis. Or they could do something unique to all that, and that's what the researchers focused on, microRNA. Before we get into microRNA, the researchers also separated out which types of muscle release more of these exosomes, which could give us some hints on the uh, types of exercise to use to accentuate these exosomes in our system. I'll be covering that in the full version of this video that you're currently watching, which you can get, including all of my other complete content, by joining the Physionic Insiders. I hope to see you there. There's a link if you want to check it out. But let's move on to the microRNA for now. MicroRNA are a type of molecule that is produced by our genes, but they are not translated to proteins like normal mRNA, like the ones that we touched on a bit ago. They stay microRNA, and they ultimately bind to mRNA that are normally destined to become proteins. But instead of allowing them to continue their journey to be translated to a protein, mRNAs inhibit the ability for these mRNAs to then be translated. Essentially, the microRNA will work together with a protein complex called RISC, and together they bind specific mRNA and degrade them. So even if the gene is expressed and the mRNA is produced, instead of it being bound by the ribosome for protein synthesis, it gets snagged by this microRNA risk complex and destroyed. It turns out that these muscle exosomes contain microRNAs, and as one example, microRNA, or MIR-130A, was measured in these cells. And as you can see, the XO, or the exosome condition, had greater levels of MIR-130A. And it's been previously characterized that MIR-130A degrades anti-angiogenesis mRNAs, meaning RNA produced by these genes that are linked to stopping angiogenesis, not what we want. If we look at the gene expression, as read by mRNA amount of two of these anti-angiogenesis genes, GAX and HOXA5, which sounds like creatures from the planet Hoth, we can see that GAX is significantly reduced in black. However, HOXA5 is unaffected. I know it looks like it goes up, but statistically speaking, uh, we'd interpret it as no difference. So while we can't attribute all of these angiogenesis gene alterations to microRNA, it does seem likely that whatever's inside these exosomes, including MIRS, does lead to changes in angiogenesis genes. Now, the study isn't without flaws. Like the researchers used mouse muscle cells to collect the exosomes. And while the endothelial cells were human, it does leave one wondering if this happens in all mammals or only mice. Fortunately, a quick look at the literature quiets some of those questions. It actually happens in humans too. That said, we also don't actually see any angiogenesis measures. We see gene changes, but no direct angiogenesis measures that were made. So I'd like to see this done using an angiogenesis model. Of course, the time and resources needed for that is far more extensive, which is probably why they didn't do it. That's fair. At any rate, the data that we went over, which wasn't all of it, does indicate that exosomes have some form of impact on the endothelial cells and certainly offers some evidence for a pro-angiogenesis nature of these cells when exposed to exosomes. And keep in mind that none of this was in exercising muscle. So if this were to translate, which I would like to see more data, it implies that muscle by its mere existence improves cardiovascular health by allowing potential angiogenesis through muscle-released exosomes 
which is incredible. Now, if you'd like more muscle-centric content, I think that this next video is especially informative. I'll speak with you over there. See you soon.